what do you think, like, Trump, like this, you know, the FBI raid and all this stuff, you know, like, do you think the GOP is actually get, get, going to get off, like, the off-ramp for, uh, for Trump? Do you think he actually, you know, do you think he's actually hurt his tension in 2024? Because I do think, like, you know, it, like, even, even even with all the talking points about everything that's going on, whatever, I don't think they have, like, like they're kind of on the back foot right now. And I think there's a lot of people just trying to get off the Trump train. Now, look. I don't think it's going to go away anytime or go away quietly anytime soon. And, you know, that might save us in 2024. But, you know, I don't think Joe, I, I don't think Joe's going to run again. And we don't really have a deep, deep bench or anything. So I, I just really, I'm really curious because I do think that between the January 6th, this FBI raid, you know, I don't, I don't think, I don't think he's a shoe in, but I don't, but, you know, it's just kind of uncertain right now, I guess, I, I guess I would say, but I just don't think like, you know, like DeSantis has the juice. So I, I think they're going to I think the Republicans are going to go with Trump. But what do you think? Well, I mean, I think what's instructive is you look at uh, what uh, McConnell and McCarthy did the day of and the day after January 6th. Right. They came out and they basically said this is Trump's fault and he's got to do something right. about it. And then I don't know if it took 24 hours or 48 hours or a week or two weeks or what. They completely reversed. And I think the, the fact of the matter is, is that um, this is the Republican Party as defined by its voters and as defined by the um, all of the sort of like the, the media machine. It cuts both ways, right? Because they're so they're 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 far more effective than they should be in terms of their numbers, sheer numbers. Right. Uh, in uh, influencing the country, in part because their agenda really is so limited, um, you know, uh, and... Did you see, Mr. Sam, did, did you see, real quick, but to your point, did you see that, that, that kind of, because you talked about the media, did you see that BS headline in the New York Times talking about, you know, there's deep fissures among the GOP about, you know, how to respond to this FBI raid? That was like... Well, they always, they, yeah, I mean, look, they, they always try and make it like there is this, these, you know, and, and the fact of the matter is, is that there's nobody who's going to go against the, the bulk of their voters and the, the, the elected representatives. There's, there's progressively more and more Republican elected officials are the, the, their voters. The, like the, the daylight is not there. Um, and I'm talking about like what's in their hearts as opposed to like, you know, they're pretending. So I think if if Donald Trump uh, went to jail, the vast majority of them would be very happy, at least, you know, the power brokers in the Republican Party, because they can get everything they want with another Republican administration, far more reliable and consistent. Uh, and, um, but they also know at the same time that he's got all of the, the sort of like popular juice. So I think they just don't want their fingerprints on any of it, frankly. And, uh, Fair. and, and so I don't know. I, I mean, I, would I rather face a uh, DeSantis or Trump? It, it sort of depends on who the candidate is that's running against them. I don't know. I think, you know, I think they're both for, uh, formidable depending on who the Democrats, you know, end up figuring out who to run. I, I just don't think you can predict at this point. So I, I think politically speaking, I would imagine most Republicans are happy to be able to defend Trump and also at the same time hope that he goes to jail. Fair enough. And the last thing and the last thing I'll leave, I'll leave you with is that, uh, you guys talked about Mike Cernovich, you know, you know, in, in passing, whatever. But, you know, my, Mike Cernovich comes from like comes from like the manosphere world and that whole and that whole crazy grift of like misogynist and you know young men and stuff. He comes from that, and I, in the manosphere world, you know, I just think it's it, and it's all merged. And like when I say it's all merged, I'm talking about all the grifters, all the like you know, crypto bros, whatever. It, it, it's all coming. It's, it's kind of kind of conglomerating into this one thing you know it used to be like the kind of separate you know yeah. separate lanes you know and it's all kind of merged into this one thing and, and, and uh, to your point sam the last time i, I we talked whatever the, that, that's where the money is too that's that, that's another like element that i think people miss it's like you know that the fraud of the week will come in but you know there's tons of money there and you know and, and it's all grifting i really do think you know 
we should find somebody to, to keep abreast of stuff. Any of these guys left his best. Also, by the way, big shout out to Choking on Ashes. I love the compliments that you give me. Thank you so much. Take care, everybody. All right. Thanks, uh, Bro Flamingo in Las Vegas.